Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. As always, I'm Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here. In today's video I would like to talk about heuristics in software testing and why they, uh, why they are so important for us as software testers and how we can benefit from them. So let's take a look what this video is all about. Before we dive into some of the most famous heuristics that you maybe know already, maybe you know, you don't know them, um, I would like to talk about some definitions. So um, a definition about a heuristic um, that I found online is, it's called a method of learning or solving problems that allow people to discover things and to learn from their own experiences. There is another de um, definition that I found. Heuristics define pro defines a problem-solving technique in which the most appropriate solution is selected at successful stages of a program for use in the next step of the program. So, what is this de 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 definition all about? It's um, uh, in 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 short, there are shortcuts. So this is usually a shortcut that you can use in order to to remember things. And maybe if you haven't heard about the term heuristics yet in software testing, you maybe you heard about the, the term mnemonics or mnemonic. So, and what is this basically? It's basically, um, it's a group of characters which formed by the first letter of each principle. It helps to remember the principle in an easy way. And this is also what, what heuristics is all about. You, you know, it's, it's, it's for you, it's a shortcut to remember um, things that you can use, that you can do while you perform your software testing activities. So let's take a look at some of the most known and famous software testing heuristics. A short disclaimer, um, this list that I'm going to show you in a second is by no means complete. There are so many heuristics out there just search for them uh, on your favorite search engine, search for software testing heuristics and you get a plethora of different heuristics that are available and are well explained by the creator and are also well explained why you can use them and for what purpose you can use them. So let's take a look on the heuristics that I picked for this video. So the first one is FCC Cuts Wits by Michael D. Kelly. What is this all about? I'll come to that in a second. Sounds weird, right? <laughs> There's a one from, it, it, that's from my uh, from my side. Uh, it's called mobile app testing. Um, so I also created my own heuristic or mnemonic for you to remember all the things that come together and are important to know for mobile testing. And there's another really great uh, mobile testing mnemonic. It's called I Sliced Up Fun by Jonathan Cole. Um, there is this uh, famous SFDIPOT from James Bach. Um, also called as the San Francisco Depot. What is this all about? We come to that in a second. We have RC, RC, RC from Karen uh, and Johnson. We have Goldilocks from Elizabeth Hendrickson. And we have many, many more. So just I, I selected just uh, some um, um, mnemonics or heuristics for you. So you can get, you get a feeling what is uh, what are different heuristics out there and for what purpose you can use them. And that's what I would like to uh, tell you now. So the first one, the FCC cuts widths, we come to that um, more in a more depth uh, uh, in, a, in a second on the next slide is it's a Turing heuristic. So you can create tours, testing tours on your application with the, with a different focus that you can use to perform your testing activities. Yeah? Then there is one that is obvious. Um, my, my mnemonic that I created is about mobile testing. So to remember the most important things when testing a mobile app. Uh, and this mnemonic will, will help you to, to focus on the most important uh, things. Same for I Sliced Up Fun. Um, the SFD IPOT, um, it's, you can use it for uh, test strategies. So whenever you are uh, coming to a new product, to a new company, and you don't know where to start with your test strategy, this mnemonic might be a really good starting point for you because it helps you, it guides you through the questions that you should answer or that you should find answers um, to, to, to your problems in order to create a really valid and solid test strategy. Um, RC, RC, RC is for regression testing. So whenever, whenever you have to perform regression testing, this mnemonic might help you to generate some testing ideas. And Goldilocks is, it's, in a nutshell, it's, it's about boundaries. Yeah? Uh, it, it says that you can add, enter a big 
um, numbers, small numbers, for example, or just the right numbers that fit into that into exactly in the into that boundaries. And um, I said that this is just like a, a small glimpse of heuristics that are available online that you can take a look at. And if you would like to know more about them, uh, as I said, search for them and you will find many, many more heuristics. So next one that I would like to talk about is use them. Of course, use them to create new testing ideas. Whenever I have a, have a problem or a testing challenge uh, or I would like to, take, uh, to create a test strategy, uh, it's the first thing that I do is I use mnemonics or heuristics to actually start my thinking process, you know, because sometimes you, you feel overwhelmed with, with the challenges, with the architecture and the things that you have to start next. And those mnemonics, they help you, they guide you through the, through the process of defining your testing ideas. And you can also combine them. That's also possible, right? So whenever you see there's like one part of a mnemonic that, you've, that fits for your project, and there might be another one that fits as well, why not combining them? Yeah. Um, of, as I just said, use them to create your test strategies. It's a really valid thing to do because it helps you, it guides you, and also make those mnemonics transparent in your team, for example. They, they, this might also be beneficial and helpful for your developers, for example. Um, explain them, uh, explain them, use them to explain the product. So, sorry, I was misreading it. Uh, so, exactly, so use them to explain your products. Yeah, so they also they, they help you and answer some questions and those guiding questions can help you in order to explain um, the product that you're working on or the problem that you're working on to others. Um, use them to learn new skills. There are also mnemonics out there that help you personally to, to find the next thing that you would like to learn. So they can guide your personal growth, your personal development and your career change maybe as well. So mnemonics are not just there for um, generating testing ideas or to create test strategies. No, they can also help you personally to, to move on and to, to step up your, your skill set. And of course, yeah, you do whatever you would like to do with them. You know, the, the most important thing is that you use them, that you know that there are existing uh, mnemonics out there that are helpful for you in order to, to make your life easier. And here's the example that I just uh, talked about, the FCC cuts widths. Um, I could also pick any other example of a mnemonic, but I, I really like that Turing heuristic from Michael uh, because it, it helps me sometimes to really get into a new product, for example, all the different tour, tours that you can do. So for example, you can do the feature tour. So you just say, okay, I, I concentrate for one hour on that, um, on that single letter or character within the mnemonic and it's a feature too and then i explore the new product and create a feature map so what is available in the product uh, is there a login registration do we have an imprint uh, a footer a header what navigation types and so forth and so forth it helps you to to get your um, to get a really good overview of, of a current project um, or another thing is uh, for example a configuration tour yeah, so um, whenever I do this, for example, I, I take a look at the application on the on the configuration parts. So what is a user able to change in the configuration or in the product while he or she is using the product? And so forth and so forth. And same for last last example maybe is the data tour. So I also use this for example also usually in combination with the bug uh, with the uh, bug magnet tool uh, as a web browser plugin that you can use in order to enter different data inputs in your application. So whenever I test the web application, I use the data tour in combination with the bug magnet tool to give me some examples on, on the different data, data that I can in, uh, enter into an application. So it helps me again to structure my thinking and to get an idea on the things that I would like to do. And this is just an example and you can do the similar thing with the other mnemonics or heuristics that I just mentioned before or that you find online as well. Yeah. The last topic that I would like to talk about is to change them. So don't be afraid of skipping parts of a mnemonic. Yeah, that's an important thing. So don't just stick to the different characters in the mnemonic just for the sake that there are characters, right? So uh, think about the mnemonic and see what is in the mnemonic. And if it's helpful, take it. If not, leave it out. And maybe you, you, you change the characters and it, there will be different naming for you to remember uh, the, the different steps that you would like to do in, in using it. 
um, add new sections to the heuristic. Yeah, I mean there were a couple of heuristics out there that were like they were changing over time. So they started with a couple of letters, and then they got extended by others, and they got um, um, by others or by the creator itself got changed in the in the in the in the future. Um, make them personal to you. That's also important. So as I just said, so don't be afraid of skipping parts. And if you see that there could be changes in the letters or also in the explanations, just for you to remember things, make them personal. Make them personal for you personally or make them personal for your product or for your project. Yeah, that's what I just said. And then I would say it's also important to share this, you know, share the mnemonic within your team, within your development team or within the organization. I, I bet uh, it will help all the others in the project as well to remember important things. Um, change is welcome and normal. Yeah, what I would like to say with that is that it doesn't mean that, uh, as I said in the beginning, that skipping is okay and change is also welcome. So if you think that you can extend the mnemonic or that you have to change something, that's totally fine. Yeah, just change it. Uh, and go with it, go with the flow in that case. And also in case you would like to contribute to that mnemonic, maybe send the creator an email saying, hey, look, I have a great idea. I have a great extension that fits perfectly into your mnemonic. How about we combine both sides? And then you are like also a creator of mnemonic, yeah? Um, this is something that I already said, is that many creators of heuristics, they change them over time already. So if you Google, for example, uh, a few hiccups, I guess, is a mnemonic that is just coming to my mind. Before it was just hiccups uh, as a mnemonic. And then there was like the view was added, the view was added uh, later on because it has changed and it evolved over time. Yeah, and if you would like to create your own mnemonic, um, that would be also great, yeah. So maybe you have a great idea, or you're working on a on a different challenge that we haven't seen yet in the testing community. And based on your experience and based on your on your learnings, maybe also on your failures, you are able to create your own mnemonic. And this is really helpful for us as the software testing community. So in case you have your own mnemonic, feel free to share it with us. It would be really great and really cool to see. Yeah, and. Um, Last but not least, yes, as I said, share it with the community because I think this is really helpful for all of us to learn about the things that you have explored during your work uh, in, in your product. Yeah, and with that, that's already uh, the video for today. Thank you for, for coming by. Thanks for watching. Um, it would be really cool if you leave a comment underneath that video with your most used mnemonic and why you are using it. and. What, what do you think is best of, of using it? And, and maybe you have also some examples where you combine mnemonics, for example. If so, I'm looking forward to your comments. Don't uh, forget to, get to uh, leave me a like. Um, I highly appreciate that. And subscribe to my channel to not miss any upcoming videos in the future. And yeah, have a nice day, a nice morning, a nice night. Thank you and see you. Bye bye.